Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're going to be talking about some TIG welding tips today for thin sheet metal. It's part two of this welding project on building this adjustable height three-legged shop stool here. Well, welding projects brings me to this. I just found a really good deal. I just ordered these volume one through five of arc welding projects from the James F. Lincoln Foundation. They got a limited time offer going on right now. It's 35 bucks for all five. If you want to get a new idea, read an old book. That's a 1958 edition, that first volume. JFLF.org. That's where to go. All right, here's the shop stool. This is where we left off. I've got to build a seat for it now. I'll do a little review here. Uh, for those that might have missed the part one, I'm using two one-inch nuts and some flat bar to make a little hex shape thing here. And it get, left me with some gaps that I welded all uh, downhill. And I cut the angles for the legs by laying them up there, marking them out, cutting them on a portable bandsaw. And laid it out with a circle on the table, tacked everything up, got plenty of tacks on it, and then welded it all out. And one of the key things was not welding that second nut. So I left it just loose, free-floating. Can't really go anywhere. But that, that helped it not bind up. So that left me with this right here. And i got to build a seat for it. And I'm building this thing out of just stuff that's laying around. Like this circle was cut, plasma cut, out of something else. And I had these pieces of stainless, 40,000 stainless sheet rolled up. They weren't the right uh, you know, radius, but they're really flimsy. So just a little massaging gets them out there to something I can work with and get it all tacked up. So I'm just tacking, I'm going to tack those on and weld it out to provide a little rigidity for a seat. And because this is plasma cut, I got to weld, uh, grind all that dross off of there. It won't weld very good at all. So I'm using a sanding disc, clean the edge and both sides, and then I'm just going to lay it up on the table like this and lay it just like this to get that first tack on there. Now you don't want to sweat getting it perfect initially. All you need is a place that's good like this to get one tack, just with a little bit of overlap and uh, one tack's all you need to start with and then you can move it around from there. Now I made this little special tool. This is really handy for tack welding really thin stainless. I just put a lot of weld uh, silicon bronze on the end of an old crappy screwdriver and that provides me with a little hold down that I can put right next to the weld. It's uh, silicon bronze. You could also use pure copper wire stripped out of some housing wire, Romex or something like that. Uh, it provides a little hold down that won't contaminate the stainless with carbon steel, even though I'm using carbon steel here on the top part of it, but I still, I'm still using this little tool. But it just provides a really good way to get right next to the weld and not risk melting it in with the weld or anything. And it's actually a little miniature chill bar too. So what I'm doing here is I got the machine set at roughly twice what I would weld it at, and I'm just giving it quick blasts. I give it a bunch of little small tacks, and I'm going to fusion weld this thing. You know, the technical term is autogenous, but I hate that word, so just fuse welding it without filler metal. And I'm using two pulses a second, 33% background, 33% pulse on time, and I'm just playing around with that. Two pulses a second is about as high as I like to go without it just getting annoying. Otherwise, I want to jump all the way up to about 30 pulses a second, and we'll do a little bit of that, too, here in just a little bit. Now, two pulses a second actually does limit the heat input quite a bit. Here I'm welding without any pulse, and you can see I'm pulling a little oxidation from the backside into the puddle accidentally, and it does look a little different, a little grayer, although a lot of that could be just, could be just me. But that little special tool like this works great on thin lap joints. This is 40 thousandths stainless material here and you can see I'm holding it I'm holding it I want to get no gap in there any thin lap joint welds really bad if you got a gap so you want to get it all tight plenty of tacks space your tacks really close and uh, this is just a way just quick a quick tool without having to see clamp and all that stuff just hold with one hand get a blast of a uh, little small little tack with a quick blast of amperage with the other with the torch hand and uh, you can motor on like that and it's so quick that you don't melt through all right, now I'm going to just lay it down. I've got quite a few tacks on here. I actually could probably use a little bit more in between, but this will be okay for what I'm doing. And then I'm going to use that corner for filler metal. And with the machine is set like between 35 and 40 amps here with no pulse. And that works out pretty good, but I'm going to experiment a little bit with some pulse too. Here I've got it set at 33 pulses a second, 33 background, and 33% pulse on time. 
and you can't even really notice it with the camera it doesn't even pick up the flicker hardly but it does make a difference and it'll keep you from melting through see I didn't even nip through on the back side of the 40 thousandths with uh, with pulsing like that you could also do it without pulse pulsing just makes it a little bit easier then I'm going to brace up the back side of this little thing to uh, just using stuff that's laying around cut up some round stock and I put a bunch of tacks on it with silicon bronze all around and uh, I don't want to warp it all up because it's pretty thin and flimsy. And then I'm just going to screw it on here. I'll get that screwed on and then I'll double nut. I got an extra nut on the back side. I'll double nut it and maybe put some Loctite on there when I'm sure it's going to be all good. And that's going to be my adjustable height stool. It goes all the way up to a little over 30 inches, all the way down to about 18 inches. And it's just fine. But it's a little hard. So I got just the thing for it. Oh, oh, a little humor. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? That's a, that's a lame, that's a lame attempt at humor. But seriously, <laughs> what I really did was I cut up some pieces. I have an old uh, interlocking floor pad that to stand on for working around a bench. I got some at a yard sale. So I'm experimenting and see if that's going to be comfortable enough. I, I think it might work. All right, a little review of everything we did here today. Number one, clean metal works better. So you always want to clean your metal if you're TIG welding, especially if it's been plasma cut. And number two, this little handy tool works great for thin sheet metal fusion tacks. And for tacking, set the amps to pretty much two times. So I would have welded this at nearly 40. I would have set it nearly up at 80 and given it a really quick blast with the foot pedal uh, to get a really quick tack that doesn't penetrate and uh, doesn't warp. And here's a subliminal uh, hint to buy a TIG finger. I don't know how that got there. All right, two pulses a second worked pretty good for that outside corner joint. It uh, wrapped those corners around but didn't really penetrate much and didn't bring much uh, oxidation into the puddle. And also the little hand, uh, handmade tool there works great on really thin lap joints. Like I've used this all the way down to 12 thousandths, uh, which is you really need uh, no gap in something that thin. And the rule of 33, I made up that rule. <laughs> 33 across the board on your pulse settings. 33 pulses a second, 33 background, 33% on time is a really good place to start if you want to experiment with some high speed pulse. And we'll let you weld really thin stuff without burning through. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.